So we're going to start with the rare books room. We have to pick the perfect book for this project so you can see everything that's going on. And Marie Chris is going to join us here in a second to pick that book. Okay, so tell me why you picked this book. Well, it's, um, it's a little bit older, and you know I can tell that it's already starting to kind of fall apart at the top where people kind of pull books out. And uh, remember, when you're, when you're pulling books out, and, and most librarians probably already know this, around. do not pull from here, pull from here. So an enclosure will help kind of... Um, make sure that people ha don't have anything to grab onto in the first place and that it comes out nice and steady and even. Great. So let's go make an enclosure. <laughs> uh, you're gonna, um, so basically these are just the um, core things that you're going to need um, to make an enclosure. There are other things you can get and I can talk about that maybe a little bit later. Um, but you're definitely going to need a ruler. Okay. You need some scissors to cut out your enclosure. Uh, scissors to help you make the marks. Um, pencil. Pencil. What did I say? Scissors. Scissors are right. Yeah, don't use scissors to make the marks. That no. would be bad. No, but the pencil <laughs> is a good way to kind of make a mark for where I'll you can laugh. draw out your enclosure. Um, an archival seaf, um, archival quality cardstock. And what we're using is a cut up mat folders. Cool. So, and then here is our book that we so carefully picked. Um, and here it is. Well, hold on a second. Why are you wearing gloves? I'm wearing gloves because, um, as we all know, sometimes old books can be dirty. Um, also, at the same time, they're also deteriorating, might have red rot. Um, you also don't want to put some um, of your uh, natural body oils that may um, further damage the book. Cool. So, Plus, again, for me, it's major, mainly that sometimes they're dirty and I have allergies to dust. <laughs> um, let's make sure that we have a big enough uh, uh, folder. So we want to make sure that we have enough to cover at least this part of the book. And then we want to make sure we have enough to cover this side and then the, the front of the book and then the side as well. So you want it to fold, one side to fold over all the way. Yeah. And probably it would be nice to have it on the left side, just like the way you would open a book. Okay. Uh, and then you want to make sure you have enough to cover that side. That looks like it's good enough. So at least the spine. Yeah. Okay. So now we are going to make a little home. So again, I want to make sure that I have enough space that's going to cover that side and give us a little room to kind of cover that edge here. So my book is going to sit right here, probably on the middle. Okay. And let's go ahead and mark it. So I'm going to try to just go from the corners, trying to have as little contact with my pencil as much as possible. Yeah, um, you're drawing on the folder, not on the book. Yeah. Around the, the edges folder. of the corners. And I like using this as kind of as a gauge to kind of find where the widest um, part is. Again, it's really, you can see how um, books are not perfectly symmetrical because you can see that this definitely goes a lot farther than the bottom one. So, again, just kind of keep that in mind, especially when you're making your marks. You can use this as a gauge to get the widest part. But, that being said, um, that's why we use pencil. Not only is it archival safe, these lines are just a guideline to help you um, figure out um, where you want to start. So you're connecting the dots. You're basically yeah. drawing a box around the shape of the, or a square around, the, or a rectangle around the shape of the book. Yeah. You can see, even just by looking at the dots, let me make them a lot bigger so you guys can see them, um, that this book looks like it's a lot wider on the bottom or than it is on the top. So that's going to be, it's good. so what's going to happen is this enclosure may look a little funky. So let me go ahead and just make it the widest part for now. But when it comes to the folding, we're going to fold exactly to the size of the book. Um, that's why these guys are custom enclosures. They're made for the specific book that you're enclosing. And um, like I said, no book is perfect. And if you want to give it as much protection as you can, you're going to want to give it as much stabi stability in the condition that it already is in. So okay, so you're basically just connecting the dots now between the corners. Yep. And we will be back in, with um, a better view of these lines. So I'm going to do... Um, Two lines going down and two lines going across. Okay. The thing is that um, I may I have um, redone the lines in markers so people can, um, watching this video can actually see the lines. Um, when you're actually making enclosure, 
uh, do not use a marker, do not use a pen. The best thing to use is a pencil. And it may, 